When a small town vet helps a wounded bear back to health, they form an odd bond that even his death can't defy. And when the town citizens understand why the bear keeps rushing back to his grave and roaring to the sky, they can't help but shed a few tears. The black bear reared up and roared. The poacher in front of him cowered, calling out for his buddy in fear. Then, a shot rang out. The terrified man could hear the dull thud as a heavy caliber slug hit home and knocked the bear backward. The huge animal twisted in midair, tumbled over backward, scrambled to its feet, and disappeared deeper into the flathead forest. The bear ran blindly for just over a mile. He ignored the scorching pain in his chest as best he could and didn't rest until he'd found a safe spot under an overhanging rock. He'd be safe here. But soon, the bear realized he was desperately thirsty. He would have to make his way down to the creek to slake his thirst, but the pain in his body would make this a mammoth task. Still, he knew he had to listen to his body. So he stumbled up, growling in pain, and slowly started walking downhill towards the creek. He chose the path where he was less likely to encounter more humans, and yet halfway through, something caught his attention. Officially, Finn Hook was Hungry Horse's town doctor, but with a population of only 830 people, he doubled up as a psychologist, a surgeon, a midwife, and even a vet. He had a busy schedule, but it was only for the morning. From lunchtime, the day belonged exclusively to him and Janet, his fiancée. Today, the two lovebirds were lying on their backs on a picnic blanket, looking for shapes in the clouds. Around them was a selection of fruit Janet had picked up in town earlier. She had unpacked several slices of freshly baked bread, spread thick with honey, and layered with healthy helpings of cheese. It was a feast fit for a king, but also for somebody else lurking nearby. The bear smelled the fruit and honey before he became aware of the humans. He approached carefully and made sure he remained hidden. When he spotted the two humans, his reaction was violent and immediate. He charged from the tree line, roaring from a combination of pain and fury. At that moment, the bear was 500 pounds of hunger, pain, thirst, and retribution. Finn noticed the bear first. He flew up and dragged Janet to her feet. His mind made emergency calculations. There was nobody else around. It was just the two of them and the bear, and nowhere to hide. He grabbed Janet by the elbow and pulled her in behind him. Then he spoke to her in a low, urgent voice. Stay close to me, he said. We're going to back out of here, slowly. I'll keep facing the bear. You take hold of the collar of my shirt and guide me as I walk backward. The bear stopped in his tracks a few yards from Finn, rearing and roaring. Janet let out a small squeal. The bear dropped to all fours, and that's when Finn noticed the gaping wound in the bear's flank. This bear is hurt, he said under his breath. Maybe he's not looking for a fight, and the food will distract him. With ample distance between himself and the dreaded humans, the bear now started focusing on the picnic basket and the smells of fruit and honey. This gave Finn and Janet time to slip back in between the pine trees and make a beeline for their truck. The next morning, Finn phoned the two best trackers in town. He explained the situation in brief and then asked them to help him find the bear. The three of them headed into the Flathead Forest. Finn had an air rifle with him, the kind that shot tranquilizing darts. He was going to try to save the bear's life, by hook or by crook. The group stumbled upon the bear's hiding place just before noon. It was a different animal from the giant, furious, charging bear Finn and Janet had encountered the day before. He was lying down, his breathing rapid and shallow. He hardly lifted his head when the men approached. Finn aimed with the tranquilizer gun and darted at the bear. Fifteen minutes later, he went to work. The bullet had punched into one side of the bear's shoulder, deflected off the bone, and exited just below the animal's spine. When he was done cleaning the wound, he pumped antibiotics into the animal to stop the injection. Bandaging the wound would be useless. In trying to move the bear to a sanctuary where he could recover safely was way outside of their abilities, but they wouldn't let him die without trying to save his life first. For three months, every morning and afternoon, Finn hiked up to the spot where the bear was recuperating. He brought a load of fruit, some cereals, lots of honey, nuts and seeds. In the beginning, the bear was simply too tired to attack him, and then, over the weeks, 
became used to his non-threatening presence. This human was nice, and every time he left after checking him out, he felt a little better and stronger. He was helping, and the bear understood it. Finn knew people would think him crazy, but he was almost getting attached to the huge bear who had given him the fright of his life a few weeks back. Janet was terrified every time he left the house to go play vet in the forest, but both of them knew he couldn't abandon a creature in need. And so, he kept visiting the bear in his den. Then, one morning, almost 12 weeks later, the bear was gone. No sign of it. For three months, he'd taken care of the bear, and now he was gone. But Finn was elated that the animal was well enough to move around. This bear would be fine now, he reminded himself. Unfortunately, six months later, Finn fell gravely ill himself. A previous bout of the coronavirus had weakened his lungs, and an aggressive virus had taken hold of his body. For two weeks he fought off the infection, but on a Sunday, a perfect day in Hungry Horse, he passed away, with Janet holding his hand. The funeral, on the outskirts of town, was a heartbreaking affair, and Janet left town shortly thereafter. She had to get away from the pain and memories and allow herself time to heal. It took three years for her to return. Her first stop was Finn's grave. That's when she noticed it, fresh bear tracks around the gravestone. She hurried back home, afraid to be caught in the forest alone by a wild predator. She returned the next day, and there were new tracks. The same the day after that. Her fear quickly turned to anger. She wanted to visit her late fiancé's grave in peace, but the lurking presence of the bear was making it impossible for her to sit down and pray. So, with the help of some friends, she installed a camera in a nearby tree. She wanted to find out why this bear was visiting Finn's grave and what she could do to chase it away from such a sacred place. She thought she would see the bear steal honey from a bee nest nearby or berries from a specific bush. But when she reviewed the footage one week later, she gasped in amazement. The timestamp said the motion sensor had been triggered just after midnight. At first, there was nothing, but then she noticed movement in the corner of the frame. A giant bear emerged from the trees in a rush. It rose onto its hind legs and roared to the sky in a furious display of power. Then it strolled over to the grave and lay down beside it, the giant head resting next to the headstone. Suddenly, the bear didn't look angry anymore, but almost sad. That's when Janet understood. This was the bear Finn had saved. The animal had not forgotten the vet's help and did a daily sabbatical to his grave. With tears streaming down her face, Janet realized that she couldn't chase the bear away from Finn's final resting place. From that day forward, she resolved to only visit the grave in the early morning and leave a few food offerings for the bear. Finn had been the only link between them, and she would cultivate this odd friendship in his honor. What a beautiful story. Did you know that wild predators can care for humans too? What would you do if you found out that a bear was visiting the grave of a loved one? Tell us in the comments below. For now though, we're out of here. Catch you in the next video.